All right, good to see you. Now you may recognize that chord progression and the reason why is because it is probably the most popular guitar chord progression in the history of mankind. Um, I don't think I'm exaggerating. It really is. Any guitar player that you meet, they've probably played that chord progression hundreds, maybe thousands of times. So I thought I should show you this chord progression because you're probably going to be using it a lot. A lot of songs, um, there are probably hundreds, maybe thousands of songs that use that exact same chord progression. Now the strumming might differ depending on the song, um, but I really want you just to focus on the chord progression and knowing uh, the chord changes and what chords we're using that work together. And then you can use your own strumming. You can write your own song that goes along with that chord progression. So let's take a look at the chords that we're using. We're starting with a G chord. Now there are a couple different ways, a few different ways you can play your G. I like to play my G like this most often, depending on the song where I'm using all four uh, fingers here. First finger on the second fret of the A string, second finger on the third fret of the E string, and then third finger on the third fret of the B string, fourth finger, third fret of the E string. So you can play it like that. You can play your G like that. You can play your G like that. It doesn't really matter. As long as we're playing a G, play the one that you're most comfortable with. Then we're gonna to go to the D chord. Then we're gonna to go to E minor. And then C. So these chords work really, really well together. You're gonna to see them a lot. So it's, it's even a good thing to do just to practice, just to try going from chord to chord because these chord changes you're going to be using a lot. So G, D, E minor, C. Now in terms of strumming, you can do whatever strumming pattern you want. I was doing a fairly straightforward common strumming pattern, down, down, up, up, down, up. Or another way to look at it is one, two, and, and four, and. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Or you could do all down strokes if you wanted to. You could do kind of like a, a, a country rhythm if you'd like. It's still the down, down, up, up, down, up, but I'm, I'm just hitting the bass string instead of strumming uh, the first beat. So I'm going bass note, down, up, up, down, up, bass note, down, up. Up, down, up, bass note, down, up, up, down, up. All right, so again, there are a number of different strumming patterns that you can use. Uh, the idea is really just to get comfortable with these chord changes because it's gonna happen a lot if you haven't already experienced that. So G, D, E minor, C. Now I wanna show you something that you can use with this particular chord progression and with a number of other songs that use those same chords, the G, D, E minor, and C. I wanna show you a way of playing these chords that kind of um, bring it all together, that help the flow from one chord to another chord not sound so choppy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave our third finger and our pinky on the third fret, so of each string that they are. So let's go back to the G chord and let's play our G like this. So making sure that we're using our third finger and our pinky, both on the third frets, on the first and second strings. 
let's leave those fingers there, the third finger and fourth fingers, for the whole chord progression and see what happens. So there's the D. There's the E minor. And there's the C. Now it does actually change the name of the chords that we're playing slightly, but it still all works whether you play the original chords that we did at the beginning of the lesson or you use these ones. They all still sound really, really good together. So we're back on the G chord. Now let's take a look, a closer look. Now when we play that D chord, it's actually becoming a D suspended because we're just going to leave these fingers there. And then when we go to the E minor, let's leave those fingers there again. Now we're uh, playing an E minor 7 chord. So we're using our first finger now on the second fret of the A string and our second finger on the second fret of the D string. And these fingers haven't moved. They might get a little bit sore <laughs> from leaving them in, in that one position the whole time. So you, want, you, you can kind of take your hands off, give them a little shake if you need to. And then when we go to the C chord, now what we can do is place your first finger on the second fret of the D string and your second finger on the third fret of the A string. Now this chord is called a C2 chord. So there's the G, there's the D, which is a D suspended, there's an E minor, your E minor, which is an E minor 7 now, and then a C. Don't get too confused or hung up on the, on the names of the chords, this is really just these are just variations of these chords that are just fun to do and fun to try. You might find that you want to play all of your C chords now like this. I, I wouldn't recommend that, but when you are playing in the key of G, like we're doing here with the uh, G, D, E minor, C, a lot of times you can substitute the regular chords with these chords. All right, so that is a chord progression in the key of G using the G, D, E minor, and C chords. So a number of different ways that you can play it. You can use the original chords, the chords that you uh, are used to playing and using, or you could try to make it a little fancier, change it up a little bit by using some of these alternate uh, chord shapes. All right, I hope that helped, and I hope you have fun with that. See you in another lesson.